Build, what is up? <laughs> Welcome to Build, man. I'm your host, Matt Forte. Uh, we are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Uh, if you follow our next guest on social media, you'll know he must be one hell of an actor because who he is as a person couldn't be further from the characters he plays on television. Uh, you've seen him on Orange is the New Black and, of course, How to Get Away with Murder. I'm excited to talk to him, not only about all that, but everything he does off camera as well. The great Matt McGorry's in the building. How about that, guys? We excited? <laughs> We're going to bring him out in just a second. But first, I believe we have a peek at the show. So let's go ahead and run that clip. Reports out of Harrisburg are saying that the FBI agents in charge of D.A. Miller's case were just seen arriving at the governor's mansion in Harrisburg. At this time, the nature of Governor Burkhead's involvement in this case... Gabriel for the win. Annalise for the win. All of us for the win, because we're not going to jail tonight. Or tomorrow either, hopefully. So let's break out the booze and have a toast for the old Wicked Witch Governor getting her due. Don't jinx it. There's no such thing. Is that your text alert? No, it's my Instagram. You need to change that. Connor needs to call his mom right now. Just posted a photo of us. No, she didn't. She did. With Nate and Miller, too. Ooh, all right, guys, wow. put your hands together, make some noise. The great Matt McGorry. Let's do it up. Uh, Matt, welcome, man. How are you doing? It's so great Thank to have you. you here. I'm great. It feels good to be here. It's just like L.A. out there. Perf um, yeah. But it, it's, <laughs> good, it's good to be back home. I grew up, like, actually not that far from here, so it's always... I was reading that. You grew up in New York. In so Chelsea. That we're, we're kind of like in your backyard almost. We really are. That's it's, just... Oh, that's I know, sweet. I know. Yeah. Thank we're, you. <laughs> Thank you for bringing me here. Yeah, of course. Well, no, I'm happy. You could, it's, it's really the entire reason we built the studio in this location. We said one day... That's very generous we'll of you. We'll bring Matt McGorry home. When I met you and I and I, and I knew we were both Matts, I, I had a yeah. feeling that we were... Well, we'd no. seen each other at the Matt meetings previously from across the room, never had a conversation, so this was really on the docket. It really was. I was glad that we were... It, it felt like it was meant to be. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about you yeah, being But everyone's welcome to the Matt meetings. Yes, of course. No, they're, they're open meetings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just what we put on the shirts. Exactly, yeah. of course. They get it, yeah. they get yeah. it. Yeah. But thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you. Okay, very good. Well, that is wonderful. Uh, I can tell this is going to be a good time. Uh, I'm so excited to talk to you about uh, whatever it is you can tell us. There's only a couple episodes left. We're hurtling towards uh, what I imagine to be a climactic conclusion here. I'm not going to ask you to spoil anything, but are you excited? You, when did you guys finish uh, shooting the show? Have you wrapped up this season? Yeah, we yeah. just finished shooting uh, about two weeks ago. Okay. Um, so I'm finally, you know, have some extra time in my life to to do all the things and stuff. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a good, it was a good wrap up, a good finish. And I got five months now, which is kind of incredible. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. I want to talk about what we're going to do at that time in a minute, yeah. but first having wrapped up the show, that means, you know, where all the pieces fall, you know, what's going to happen. Are you excited for everyone to see that? Is it, are you ready for, for everyone to freak out as they tend to do when, uh, when a twist or turn occurs? I, I am. I'm, I'm hoping everyone's like adrenal glands still have some like adrenaline left in it after five seasons. You know, I think it's, there's a lot, it's a lot of, you know, tension and, uh, anxiety and 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 all sorts of things. So, but I am excited. I think people are going to be really, um, you know, shocked because they really know how to turn a story. You know, for sure. Well, that's one of the things, right? You you point out five seasons. What's kept people coming back year after year are are the the twists and turns, the the jaw dropping moments. As someone who's on the show, who's living that world, I remember reading once a while ago that you would film like the flash aheads, like out of sequence, so you had no concept of, of the context surrounding them and stuff. W would you ever get a script, and did you ever find yourself, as you were reading through, like, did you gasp? Did you have a jaw-dropping moment? Were, were you ever surprised as you were reading it? Um, yeah, uh, many times, and, and, and there are times where, you know, the table read is the first time we're, we're really reading it, so those are the moments where, you know, in a room with everyone together, you can see you can sometimes see who read it before the table read and who didn't, yeah. uh, just, just by the look on people's faces. Um, but it is nice to be able to kind of experience that, you know, all together and collectively, yeah. you know. That sounds cool. Do you ever get halfway through one and go, oh, man, I hope I'm still alive at the end of this? Yeah. Did you ever? <laughs> yeah, so I, I would imagine I'd pro they'd probably, thankfully, have a meeting with me before uh, if they were ever going to do that. Um, you'd hope so. But, you know, but you can't live your life in fear. You know, you just got to live, live out there. Yeah, out I suppose loud. so. Live out there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like that. Out there. Yeah, out there. Yeah. Well, not right now out there. It's no, awful. No, no, no. Honestly, it is terrible out there. It is. Yeah. I'm, 
I heard Maui has some uh, a lot of snow today. Really? I heard that. That is insane. Somebody said, yeah, in the crowd, confirmed. Yeah. There we are. Oh, Two people you. have said it out loud. That's how you know it's real. That's it. That's how you can... There's That's already it. a Wikipedia page about Sources. it. Sources, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, one of the things I was really excited... This is my, personally my first time talking to you. In this character... I love, uh, Asher's a great character. He's one of those characters that people love to hate. You know, he's got that, that surface level bro-y douchiness stuff. It's around season three, we start to see him grow and, and, and sort of evolve a little bit beyond that. But he is still, a, he's one of those characters people kind of love to hate. And, and that's a delicate balance. That's a tightrope that you got to walk very carefully. And I'm just curious for you how, you, how you sort of started that, how you constructed him, how you began with, with your journey with Asher. Yeah, so the, the character's name in the script, actually, originally he was supposed to be, like, in half the episodes. And, yeah, and his his name was uh, Doucheface. That was his scripted name before he was actually given a name. Um, so I, I really... Scripted name. Scripted name was Doucheface. They actually... I took a photo. They When we were in Philadelphia shooting the pilot, they actually spelled it wrong on the on the trailer once. And I just thought it was like... I was like, this is the... Like, this is perfect. Like, not only is that the character name, but it's, like, spelled with, like, no O. Um, <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, early on also they really, I mean, part of the great thing about TV and, and, and also um, about Pete Nowak, our creator, is, you know, he's really willing to sort of, you know, try and understand the characters and, like, and sometimes follow the lead also. You know, it's a a balance of... We follow the writing, but we also are injecting our own sort of takes into it, and that allows the character to evolve or devolve uh, in some ways, you know. Um, and so, when I came in, and you know, when I was reading for the role, I I made sure to put everything in it, and you know, the character became you know very animated and and uh, in many ways, um, and uh, yeah, and so it's been it's been this really great journey to see him also grow, I think, over time as well as I've grown too you know well that's the thing i was that was my follow-up there so you know like five seasons it's a long time it's it's a rare opportunity for an actor to be able to spend that amount of time with a character uh and, and asher has he's grown and i i can't help but observe that and, and and wonder like the correlation between your personal growth and that character growth so like what uh what are you proud of over the time that you've been with asher that you've been able to fold into the, to this guy and and what well, that you got to work on that you're really excited about that stuck with you yeah, so there have been, um, you know, a lot of great conversations that have gotten to happen. You know, I think our set is one where people are particularly socially conscious in, in the cast and the and the creator, and, the, and and it's it's a it's a goal, you know, as Pete has stated, to really sort of you know shine a light on storylines that have not necessarily been talked about and to kind of really flesh that out. So part of that is even um, <clears throat> Pete came with me to a, a fundraiser that I was helping throw for Reform LA Jails. Um, which is a, a campaign in LA that it's working to stop the expansion of these, you know, almost four billion dollars worth of new jails that they're trying to put in, because um, that's th the next thing we need is more jails. Uh, you know, you know, you just got to have it. Um, and so he came with me to that, and, and there was um, some stories being told by people who've been uh, formerly incarcerated and and uh, and impacted by the system. And he was really moved by that. And and actually, the story of uh, Nate Senior being killed by a corrections officer on the show was inspired by, you know, some of the stories that were told uh, that evening as well. Um, so I'm really happy to see that in there. You know, the character of Gabriel this season identifies as an abolitionist, and I identify as an abolitionist, uh, a prison abolitionist. And um, and so it, it's been amazing to see those conversations really being brought to such a, a big light, you know. What has what has that done for for fan interactions? For when people recognize you on the street as the characters grown, when they meet you, do they expect you to be more like Asher? Are they pleased when you're not? Like, what is <laughs> what is that process like? Yeah, I mean, it's a you know, it's it's interesting because the people I think that identify tend to of the people that are maybe on the further on the right spectrum. I think that I'm a character. I think people tend to identify with a little bit more because. You know, the character, I think, comes from that background and is this, you know, white privileged guy who's, you know, essentially learned to understand a bit more about that, you know, in even being in a group that is, you know, uh, multiracial in a way that I think he was not exposed to growing up. Um, but it is, you know, I, I feel like if I'm out and I like to dance, if you see me dancing, you'll probably just guess if you're like, hey, is that that guy from you'll probably know it's that guy because 
I'll probably be doing body rolls, you know, because that's just how I like to, safe bet. you know, that's how I like to do. It's so safe bet. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm glad you brought up the dancing. Uh, when you get handed a script and it simply says, opens on Cotton Eye Joe. Right. And <laughs> Asher dances. Do they go, we need you to choreograph something? Like, what, what, <laughs> what goes into crafting that moment that has since been immortalized as many memes and GIFs right. and videos all over the Internet? Uh, well, tell me about that particular day and when you're tasked with that. question. Great question. Um, <laughs> you know, I think it started actually the first time. I mean, a lot of the dance stuff like just kind of became improvisational um, in moments yeah. where punctuating the jokes that he would tell or something like that. Um, and, you know, we had one scene, I think it was season one maybe, where Asher's in his apartment getting ready for this bonfire thing, and it says Asher dances. And I took it upon myself to choreograph a dance routine and many times exactly as well yeah i told the uh our guy who was doing props i was like can you bring me just like a stack of like fake dollar bills and i just you know made it rain all over my apartment um but then you know i think again so this is one of those things where the writers tend to see it and they also become you know interested in it and then end up scripting it for later too but yeah the cotton eye joe dance was um Literally on the day I turned up and I was like, I'm just going to go with what moves me. And it, it turned out to be, uh, you know, flipping my leg around and like, bouncing you know, it bouncing bed. it off the bed. I thought a like, brilliant move. Thank you. Didn't it's see actually, that coming. I use it at the clubs, you know. Okay, yeah, yeah. you look for a, a low chair yeah. and then you just <laughs> wail on it. It's a great way to clear out like, you know, a space. If you're like, oh, I wish I bought a table. I don't want to spend $10,000 and you just start. You know, doing the leg Just thing. Throw a leg up there. It's great. Gets the job. All your friends get in. It's perfect. So you're all welcome to um, especially Matt's. I really, I really do want to get to uh, uh, some exciting stuff that you've been doing off camera in just a second. But I got to ask one more question. I wouldn't be doing my job here. Uh, you know, you, you, we got to talk about Asher and a little bit of the redemption of Asher over time. Uh, and I know you haven't been on this show since season three, but with the seventh and final season of Orange is the New Black coming around and many of fans still wondering where the hell is Bennett, uh, have, would, would you, as, a, as an actor, like to go back, even if just for uh, part of one episode, and just put a, put a pin on that story and tie that up? Is that something you would want to do? Yeah, absolutely. I, I would love to do that. I think that would be a lot of fun. I think it would be good to see where he uh, ended up. I'm, 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 I'm not sure where that is. I'm not you don't sure. know where it is either. No, I don't know where that is. No, they haven't yeah. told you. No, nope. they don't. No, nope. but you never know. <laughs> perfect, perfect way to perfect way to wrap that up. It's called a tease. That is a tease. That is a nice tease. Expert tease, if I may say so. I appreciate that. Um, talk to me about uh, what's been going on outside now that you've got five months in front of you, uh, or even before you had the free time. Really, you know, I, I was going back in your timeline and looking, and, and keep me honest here, it feels like something struck you in like the 2015-ish area where you became highly motivated and super passionate and, and super involved uh, in, in activism and social justice. And I'm wondering uh, what what the catalyst was, what was the moment that kind of inspired you? And I want to go a little bit on that journey, if we could. Yeah, absolutely. So it was about four years ago. It was <clears throat> after I had started How to Get With Murder. And, um, you know, I always say that due to the fact of my many, many privileges as a cisgender, heterosexual, white man that, you know, I... I thought that I'd considered other perspectives in my life, but I had never really done it in a deep, deep way. And, and I was uh, dating a woman who was a, who was an entrepreneur and having, you know, trying to get funding for a startup. And she kept going through these experiences where she'd be setting up meetings and then, you know, all of a sudden lunch meetings would become like, you know, late night drinks because, oh, the schedule moved. And, and then she was, you know, having to ride this line of like being friendly, but not like leading someone on and not being so, uh, you know, withheld that she's considered cold and calculating all these different like you know loopholes and or not loopholes but like you know hoops that women have to jump through and and it, was, it really struck me I was like wow I would never have to have that experience as a man and other than like being the guy who's dating you and like trying to give you advice or like console you if I actually want if I actually care I should try to become a part of the solution and examine how I'm a part of even creating you know and upholding a system that that also <laughs> does that to other women you know um, yeah. 
and, and from that's that's pretty amazing, man. So from there, uh, yeah, you you can tell like you it was almost like a light bulb or a yeah. fire was ignited inside of you. Um, and what about uh, you mentioned uh, kind of working on this show and, and some of the influences around you and surrounding yourself with with some of these incredible people. Yeah. Um, you know, when you when you went back to set and you were like, guys, this is this is a path I'm on. I'm committed to this right yeah. now. What was the reception like from the rest of the team and from the people you were surrounded with and working with? Yeah, it was pretty great. You know, we've we've all got to grow. I think together as a whole and you know I just uh, launched a company um, last week called Inspire Justice where basically what we do is uh, a big part of it is social impact coaching for other um, influencers or celebrities not my favorite word to say um, but to you know essentially if people want to use their platform for social good to really be able to to say how do we do that right and how do we plug you into the grassroots movements on the ground that are you know affecting the change and the other big part of that actually is you know we my partner and I uh, J love Calderon who's a amazing lifelong anti-racist uh, organizer um, led a training for 220 cast crew and creatives of the show uh, on how to create a thriving culture um, that you know, that really allows everyone to be their fully best expressed, um, you know, and, and fully expressed selves and really allows everyone to thrive, you know. And I think the idea of being intentional about that um, and about really looking at culture, right, rather than just, you know, individuals and shifting culture is a way that, you know, this, my industry needs to, you know, needs to shift, um, obviously, not just sort of in, in front of the camera and the stories that we're telling, but also behind the camera, too. So I'm really excited about that. And the reception was amazing. And it looks like we're going to continue to expand the reach on that um, as well. So yeah. Congratulations, man. Thank a week so ago, much. you launched a company. Like, yeah. I feel like we buried the lead there. That, right, like, you right. Started, right. That you, you, that's pretty incredible when you think about uh, only four years. Like, just like looking at the, the passage of time and how quickly uh, you, you one can be mobilized when, when motivated and how you can enact change. One of the things, much smaller scale that I've, that I've seen you do that I really respect is uh, the way you engage whenever someone comments on, a, on an Instagram post or something and, and they you engage in a positive way and you try to have a conversation and, and tell people, I, I encourage you to educate yourself more thoroughly on this. How, how do you approach those conversations? Have any of them stuck with you? Because uh, there's no shortage of, of people on the internet that you, people that you disagree with, that you can talk to. So, so when did you decide, All right, I, I have to talk to these people, I have to, I have to talk back, I have to engage, and, and, and how's that been for you? What do you think of that experience? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's an, I think there's something that we, we need to learn. We talk about this in, in, you know, in my activism a lot and social justice a lot is, you know, as, as white people when we're talking about race or as men when we're talking about sexism, we need to be willing to call in other men or other white people, right? Um, the 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 rather than calling out, I guess is the distinction. And you know, part of that means that we ha you know we didn't always know what we know, right? So we have to be able to take the time to say, rather than just shaming you for making a comment, I have to actually I think be able to say, hey, I understand why you said that. You know, I used to think similarly, um, but I started to think about it this way, and I realized that like actually it is my responsibility to educate myself in this way and to really create an opportunity for learning. Um, and it's, I have, you know, I, I don't do, I don't comment as much as I used to sort of online in those conversations, um, but I have had some pretty amazing turnarounds and sometimes I just trust my instinct of, even recently someone had messaged me and, and was saying like, oh, I think your post is like missing something. It was a, it was a, uh, a white woman. And, um, and it was about, it was about anti-racism. It was on Martin Luther King Day. And, um, and I responded, I did a long response. Um, and then she was like, wow, I never thought of it that way. I appreciate you. And I was like, great, I'm glad you do. Here are a few book suggestions. It, it can't stop it, just, you know, thank you for the information. You do know. you think those conversations are more or less effective when you have them online because you've removed, on the one hand, you remove the, the human element and you're just seeing lines of text, so it's harder to connect, but on the other hand, you, you can read something in, at your own pace and your own time and, and not have the other person's emotion projected onto it. Like, have, as someone who's had both of those in person and on the internet, do you, do you, what do you think of that? Is there, is there an advantage or disadvantage? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's complex, and it can it can be kind of go either way. You know, I think that there is a live time thing in person when people feel confronted with something that oftentimes 
you know, as white people, as, as white men, we get defensive about the idea. We think like, oh, I'm not, I'm not a racist or I'm not a sexist, therefore something I've done could not be racist or sexist, which is just not the case. We don't have to be definitively, it's not a binary experience. We're all swimming in that culture. So I think being able to lay things sometimes out in text allows people to sometimes take a moment and really sort of process rather than in the moment reacting or cutting you off or shutting you down. Um, but ultimately the nuance and <clears throat> the ability to, to be vulnerable you know, which I think is an essential part of having those conversations um, in an allyship capacity, right? Like I think the expectations on gender marginalized and you know racially marginalized people have to be different because they're living every day experiencing it and we can't expect them, as people that have privilege, we can't expect them to have to present it in this cool, calm and collected way um, when you know maybe they just want to live their life, right? We can do we can do that work ourselves. So I always usually I try to plant a seed and just get enough to get the the understanding of like oh yes oh oh I do have a sort of privilege and then say great now that you understand that you know uh, presuming that we all have espouse the values of equality this is a way to follow up on that yeah. and don't let me be your only source of information here's some great you know black women women of color that you can follow right. so you're not just getting it from me. Where do you, uh, Inspire Justice just launched this week. What, what are your uh, blue sky goals and aspirations five years from now? Where, where do you want Inspire Justice to be? What are you guys hoping to achieve? That's a beautiful question. Um, I think, you know, for me, uh, on one hand, we want to really transform the culture of Hollywood, right? We understand that things like the Me Too movement, um, it's not just about individual bad people. It's a culture that allows it to persist. So if we can shift the culture in that way, if we can stop seeing it as a binary and we can stop being bystanders and start being upstanders, we can actually create that change in the culture. Um, so that's huge. And, and to be able to expand that, the reach on that, which it looks like is a very good chance of it happening already, um, would be incredible. And then I think really to be partnering with, you know, influencers who are passionate about social change and to be able to spread that model in a way that what we really do that makes us unique in some ways is we are tied to the grassroots movements and grassroots is always where the change happens and so often we're in this country about top-down change and it actually I think the trick is about getting those at the top getting those with the power and the privilege to actually listen to the grassroots and say oh what do you need not this is how I want to be an ally but how do you need me to be an ally and yeah that's it's mom. Well it's pretty amazing, man. It's Thank you. I <laughs> it's a great mission that. statement. Uh, we've got a. Uh, where can people find out more information about Inspire Justice? How can they uh, yeah. contribute to the mission? How can they be a part of the plan? I appreciate that. Uh, we're on uh, weinspirejustice.com and on Instagram, weinspirejustice as well. And uh, we're just getting started. It's pretty awesome, man. Well, congratulations on that. Uh, How to Get Away with Murder, of course, is Thursdays on ABC. I want to say 9? Nope, 10, 9 Central. I was getting the Central time. That's what I was remembering. So Thursdays on ABC, 10, 9 Central. But you already knew that. Uh, before we wrap things up, we got a couple of questions from our audience. Our first one's coming to us from Twitter, from Niles. Uh, and Niles says, what's been your favorite scene of Asher so far this season? Good question. Thank you, Niles. Um, Damn, I love it. He's got the, he's in for it. Yeah, he, not yeah. Is in. Look yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's hard to say. I will say I really do love the scenes with, you know, the other kind of core cast. The Keating, Keating Five is just, they're just so fun because we, we really do love each other. And <clears throat> we have, we did a staycation recently that was like really fun in, in downtown LA and, and went out dancing and it was an amazing time. A lot of body rolling? A lot of body rolls, let me tell you. <laughs> More than I can count. More uh, rolls, waves in the sea? I don't know, I'm gonna leave that analogy there. Um, but I, I like the, uh, it's not even an analogy, it's like, a, I'm not sure what it would be. I was going towards like a French bakery thing and then you went sea, which was probably better and we still couldn't stick the landing between the two of us. Uh, so. You know, Yeah. we'll figure it out next time. We're uh, gonna, yeah, when you come back, yeah, exactly. we're gonna crush that. We'll workshop it. <laughs> okay, exactly. Like it. Um, but yeah, the group scenes I, I really do love. We have so much fun and we sometimes mess up too many takes by laughing. Yeah. Well, that was one of the things I was thinking about. Uh, thanks for your question, by the way, uh, Niles. When I was uh, watching that ridiculous Cotton Eye Joe scene, it's like, how many times did they do this before they could get it done without people cracking up? And it looks like for as serious as the show gets, uh, you guys, you've been together for so long, there's obviously a lot of fun that happens before they say action and a lot of laughs and stuff like that, I imagine. There's all the time. And sometimes during the takes. And during, yeah. I, I gotta be honest, there is, you know, sometimes in the world of shooting it on TV, like the scene where where, we, where I'm holding the phone at the end of the scene, um, you know, in order for them to get it properly, I have to really just hold it. I have to like, I have to hold it for like five seconds. 
And it's such a high tension thing that <clears throat> it took us a while. I think it was like one of the last scenes we were shooting before like a mini hiatus too. We're all like, okay, let's just please, please keep it together. Um, but it is, it, it makes for amazing gag reels and it's just a lot of fun. It's awesome. Uh, do we have a couple in the room? We do. Awesome. So our next question is going to come from the microphone right over here. Go for it. Hi. Um, so I was wondering who your favorite cast member is to do scenes with. And if you could have any person guest star on the show and work with them, who would it be? Wow. Great question. Damn. Um, <laughs> I love having scenes with Asia, Asia Naomi King, who plays Michaela. Um, she's a fantastic actor and she's just, she's such a, she's so powerful and also such a sweet, caring person. And it's just this great combination where she's just, I feel like I, I, I'm excited when I see a, a scene in the script because I'm like, oh, I get to go hang out with this person now. And that I feel like is just uh, truly, truly delightful. Um, man, who would I, I wish it could be like multiple choice or something. Um, <laughs> Weirdly, I'm I'm like I'm the I'm really the worst when it comes to like naming even like my favorite actors. Um, <clears throat> let's see, let's see. I'm I'm I'm. You want to make it even harder, living or dead? <laughs> right. And there you go. Great now question. you've got to choose from all. That actually that makes it a little easier because oh, yeah? I, I think my go-to for a while was Robin Williams. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, but. I mean, there's so many incredible people, and I'm having a hard time thinking about it. I'm going to have to think on that. I might get back to you on that. Okay. Rob, okay. Thank, thank you for you. your question. Robin Williams makes a lot of sense, of course. I just thought you would have gone deeper back once we opened it up to living or dead. I don't know why. Like, That's true. Like Jimmy Stewart. I don't know. Right. Anybody. Right. You can do anything. Um, I literally, I was like <laughs> trying to think of someone from further back, and I can't even do it. All right, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a lot. In your defense... It's a lot of people. There's a lot of. I was just like, I have like people. an IMDb just like going in my brain right now. It's a big list to have to choose from. I mean, I, I got to choose from three places for lunch. I get paralyzed by decision every morning, so I can't imagine you. you having to choose from all those people. I appreciate your support. I'm with you, man. I got you. Maybe my answer is you. Oh. That is, <laughs> I don't even know where to go from there. We technically have one question, but right. how do you follow this moment up? Uh, Kate, thank you. We've got one more. Uh, let's go for it. Microphone, come on down right here. Hi, how's Hello. it going? Hello, get up you. Um, it, How to Get Away with Murder is such a great ensemble show, um, and Asher often depends on his uh, friends and colleagues to not make a, a dumb mistake. I'm wondering if um, if he was left to his own devices, do you think Asher would get away with murder, and how would he do it? Uh, no, I don't think he would. <laughs> I don't think he would. He, he's also, he's not, a, he's not a very good liar, uh, which I think in some ways is a good thing. Like, he's like, he, I think, just has a hard time. He's, I think people do admire the fact that he often speaks his truth. Um, and, you know, and I think that is something about him that I really like. And he's just, like, f very forthright with his joy. But at the same time, I don't think that he's capable of keeping secrets very well. So um, I think it's good that he has good friends uh, who can kind of keep him in place and point him in a direction at different times. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for your question. Thank you, all you guys, for your questions and yeah. being an awesome audience. Uh, like we said, How to Get Away with Murder, ABC, Thursdays, 10, 9 Central. Uh, fingers crossed. Nobody knows, but we hope to see you pop up in the last season of Orange is the New Black. And one more time, the website for uh, Inspire Justice. I, I, I can't remember. Absolutely. It's uh, www.weinspirejustice.com. Perfect. And uh, We Inspire Justice on Instagram. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I love the, the illustration. I'll never forget. Thank there you. we are. Uh, guys, this was a blast. I hope you had fun, man. It was I did. I had a lot of fun. Perfect. Thank it was great having you here. Everybody do me a favor. Show them how much fun we have. Make a ridiculous amount of noise. Thank Mr. Matt McGorry right Thank here. Thank you. Appreciate you.